I'm here at Gutted 2021 with Matt, and you'll see I'm just parked right here, and Matt is parked right here with his rig, and I'm a little bit jealous because he was saying that it drives just like an SUV, which is far from mine, but he was kind enough to give us the tour. I'm seeing it for the first time just like you. Let's take a look. All right, here we go. It's a 2010 Bluebird Vision, 40 foot bumper to bumper. It's a puller, so, you know, it's the engines in the front, of course, and it's a, um, a Cummins 6.7 with an Allison 2500 transmission. And it does really well, you know, in the mountains in Colorado and whatnot. And so we just got it in February, so about a little over seven months ago. And it was, it drove to kids to school on a, on a Friday and we picked it up on that next day on Saturday, <laughs> so. So you know all the maintenance records were up to date. Oh man, that was the best part, you know. Got the full print out, you know, all the stuff, the recent, you know, stuff they had done. And it, you know, hadn't been sitting or anything, so it was in great shape. So, so you just bought it. If you don't mind me asking, did you get it from the school directly? How did that work? So, the, so the Denver City School System has a, a subcontract, a contractor that runs their bus system for them, and so that's who I bought it from directly from them. And so they just said that their business model was changing, and because kids weren't riding the school the school bus to school anymore, so they were switching to more like a shuttle bus style, kind of like you'd see at an airport. So not as many passengers and so yeah so they're getting rid of a lot of their larger buses and that kind of thing so you mind talking about what you paid and how many miles were on it i paid seventy five hundred dollars for it it was had uh it's a 2010 so it's 11 years old it had eighty five thousand miles on it so that's pretty yeah. good yeah and it's a diesel bad. yeah so it's just kind of getting broke in yeah which which the funny thing is so I, I i probably a lot of people will say well that's a lot to pay for a bus but let me just tell you this so real quick backstory <clears> is <throat> so i was thinking about like within the few weeks leading up to buying the bus, we, we went from let's get a travel trailer to like a covered trailer, maybe we can camp in it. Like, okay, well let's maybe, what about a van? What about a camper? What about a class A rig? And then a buddy of mine on that Friday was like, hey, have you thought about, have you thought about a school bus? And I was like, a school bus? He goes, listen, they're built like a tank. You know, you can build it however you want to. And I was like, oh, you had me at tank. <laughs> 24 hours later, I had a school bus. I've known the name Cummins is good. I knew that Bluebird was a good, you know, was a decent uh, brand and whatnot. But after doing a lot more research since I bought it, I'm, I'm pretty pleased, you know, with, with what we got, so. But yeah, so here, you know, here we are. It's a little over 217 square feet from right here behind the driver's seat all the way to the very back. And uh, we have three kids that are, that are with us. We're not living in it full time yet. It's not finished, but here's where we are. Right now we've got the subfloor down. We're gonna put some put some more floor on it and do a lot of trim and other things. And so I guess we'll start up here in the front. So my oldest son is gonna sleep here. This is probably a temporary couch just because it sticks out so far. It's kind of huge for this space, but we just wanted to put something in it for this trip. Same thing with this couch. Again, just something to get us going until we actually build out the rest. With this cost of lumber and uh, skill set, you know, my abilities, this year I decided just to go ahead and buy cabinets. Butcher block countertop. Under here we ha I have you know, the plumbing and whatnot. Here's our, one, uh, our diesel heater, which at the moment is our only source of heat. It's plumbed on one side of the cabinets over there, and then the other one's here, so you can angle that. What brand um, is it? It's just some Chinese. Does, it, um, does Happy Buy ring a bell? Yep, it's Happy Buy. And yeah. what'd that run you, if you don't mind me asking? I think it's like 150, 160 bucks, somewhere uh, in there. How long did it take you to install it? A couple hours. And uh, did you tap off the gas tank? I oh. did. Oh my gosh. That was the best thing I did. Yeah, so <clears throat> and as opposed to carrying diesel through my here it is. It has worked really well. Uh, obviously, it's hot right now, and uh, the temperature it gets to in the night is, is not cold enough to turn it on but I really like it and we do have plans I'll show you real quick here if I can get if I can get it insured to put in a wood burning stove here so that's what this is set up for this is not finished but it's gonna have a, a countertop or basically here and we'll store firewood in here we've got a Dometic uh, it's a 12 volt fridge which I really like it's got the fridge and freezer so I mean it's keeping stuff really cold it's pretty big it it actually only pulls about five amps when it's running at its max i really like it this is kind of almost a regular house fridge but you get the low draw compressor mm -hmm. i believe it's made by dan foss and uh you just can't go wrong this is the first one i've seen this size and so yeah. this is a it's a good investment and then so the front again the front of the uh wheel well you can see on both sides is, is right about here and so that's so here's our bunks for our, our two younger kids 
I built them out as far as I did. And then they have, they have some little cubbies up here. And then in front of their little cubbies, uh, in, in this area is kind of like our little pantry. So out, out on, the, on the side here, we have just some pantry, some food storage, that kind of a thing. And then, yeah, like I said, the wheel wells under here. I didn't really want to make it like submarine style, tiny bunks. So I tried, you know, that's why we just have two and then our, our oldest sleeps on the futon. But it's big enough, you know, they each have their own little light. If you kind of lean in just a little bit further, you can see up there, they each have their own little reading light, which has a little USB charger. Yeah, and then behind you is our bathroom. And so this is on the left side of the bus. So we just have a composting toilet, which I won't open it right now, but we do have, you know, peat moss storage right here. There's a little 12 volt fan in the back there that's uh, vented to the outside. Yeah, so it in PEX. Yeah, PEX, actually that was really easy to work with. My plan is to just kind of build my own fiberglass shower base for it. So we'll have a shower head up in the corner up there and then uh, there's there'll be a drain. So <clears throat> the gray tank is actually right underneath all of this mess back here. So okay. it's, it's underneath the bus back there. This is, uh, well, this is the our master bed, which um, we can lift up the front of it. We have two 65 gallon freshwater tanks. On the right side is our solar batteries. We do, we have um, Victron components for our um, solar, our inverter and our solar charger. It's an MPPT. That's it looks like you've really gone over the top in making this a professional, not so slapped together, get on the road. I mean, yeah. you're taking your time and you're really being thorough with every step. I'm trying it's just to. apparent. Yeah. Well, thanks. Well, I guess what you're looking at there, yeah, this is our, our battery monitor. This is our hot water heater, which is all dusty because it's so dusty here. And then our uh, inverter controller. On, on top is 600 watt panels. So... They were energy panels. I bought them and then talked to some solar guys that are in, near Colorado Springs, is which where we're based out of. They're the ones that, that's the only thing that I didn't do myself was actually install all of the electrical components there. I wired the bus, did all that stuff, put the panels on top, but it's, you know, making sure all that stuff was fused and whatnot. That's the only thing I didn't do. All the rest of the plumbing and everything I did myself. And so it's, it's been a learning process. <laughs> But here we are. So we're about six and a half months into the build and uh, just needing to get out and use it. And, and like, kind of like you were saying, you know, figure out what works for us and, you know, where to, how to build out the rest and make it fit and that kind of thing. So as far as how this bus is going to be used, you've got young children. Mm -hmm. Are you, is this going to be your camper for recreation, but you have a house and you're going to stay established in Denver? Yeah. And right. So we're not planning at the moment on living in it full time. Um, but I'm building it so that we could if we wanted to there's there's a lot of wacky stuff happening <laughs> in the world and uh, And we would love you know at some point to get some property out in the middle of nowhere and have us pl Have a place to go and, and not have to worry about building a cabin or something like that So this is that's that's kind of like a down-the-road idea for us. So multi-purpose so, kind of for sure Yeah camping recreation that kind of a thing, but then also a livable cabin at at our own property or some you know, friend's property or something like that for more of a long-term type scenario in the future. Is there any advice you'd give anybody that was looking to do something like this? Man, well, YouTube is a huge resource. You know, that's that's amazing place to, to learn. I guess my best advice would be, you know, have a, have a decent plan, be flexible as you go. You know, the, obviously the more work you can do yourself, you know, the better you'll know your bus or your rig, whatever it is, and uh, be able to repair it. Like we got here the other night and I had a, I had flickering lights and I had long story, long story short, I had a, a bad 12 volt ground. So I had to fix that. But, uh, anyway, but yeah, just, uh, just understanding how, how everything fits together and works and stuff. That's just a really, it's great to be your own kind of diagnostician, you know, as you're out on the road. What kind of budget would you recommend that somebody will uh, realistically come in with to see what we've seen here today, bus and, and uh, build. Yeah, my wife and I were talking about that. We're like, basically, open your wallet, <laughs> whatever's in there, that's your, <laughs> take all your dollars, that's your budget. <clears throat> but no, just just kidding. After you after you buy the bus, honestly, we weren't, we, we were trying to be fairly frugal, but not pinch every penny. Obviously our solar setup and our refrigerator, and there's a few things where we didn't try real hard to save every penny that we could. But, I mean, for this big of a bus, I mean, you could, you could easily put, I mean, you'd have a really nice rig if you had 10 grand to put into it, but I think you could do it for, for under that. You could get close to where we are 
Is that bus um, and all or after no, the build? No, that's, after, that's so, after the bus. So, cost of the bus. And then what you see here, which to be fair, folks don't need things no. as nice as, it's good to go big because yeah. this could be your home and you want to have right. the good stuff. So about 10 grand after the build to see what we've seen here today. Um, and you can also yeah. keep continue over time as the budget allows. You don't have to do it all at once. That's right. Yeah. Oh, well, and then a big part of that budget is the, is the lumber prices this year, you know, and the price of tools and other things like that. So um, that's definitely had an impact for sure. That's why I bought, I bought pre-made cabinets instead of building my own and, and that kind of thing. So that, that definitely affected the cost for sure. So in a normal year, you know, you probably could shave two or three grand off of that price. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. So this is our under storage, which I, I'm totally, uh, totally amped that it came with the bus right so it, it was I know a lot of people have you know built out stuff to put up under here but I'm so thankful that it came <clears throat> already pre-made oh wow like this and it's yeah it's pretty huge and um, I'm sure down the road it'll have more stuff but for now you know and it's about two feet deep and about I don't know 18 20 inches tall and these are uh, approximately oh, sorry pup about four feet wide each so it's got storage just like this on this side and on the other side. This is this is where the uh, the handicap lift was, and so now it's just part of our part of our garage and storage here. So we can fit tall things here. Obviously, have the ladder, some extra fuel tools, our propane tanks for our. Um, this goes back a little bit. Yeah, and that, again, that's up under the bed in the back. You can see, you know, you can see the water level pretty yep. easily there, and then. Um, I don't know. Good light right there for you if it's dark. Yeah, that one's locked from the inside. So yeah, but basically, <clears throat> you know, you can you can see there's there's quite a bit of space in there. Um, and then actually walking around on this side is where we have uh, this is our you know the hot water heater. It's the it's the Gerard. Um, so that is a really. Can I see that again? Yeah. So it's a really great unit. Um, I had seen some other people use it, did some research. And did you cut this out? I did. Nice yeah. work. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, cut that out, you know, put Bondo in here on the ends to uh, to kind of make it look like it was meant to be that way. It does look like it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, Good thanks. job. And uh, and then <clears throat> we have our, um, our fresh water fill right here, which <laughs> I backed over my cap and so cracked it. I got yeah, another well. cap, but anyway. But um, but yeah, that's our freshwater fill. It's just a gravity fill. I know a lot of times people hook up to the, you know, the city pressure that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I didn't see us using it that way. So that's what that is. And the vent is also right there. And then here's our vent for our composting toilet. The storage on this side as well, same as the other side. Um, and then you know, electrical panel and and batteries for the bus. Uh, this is the bus's 12 volt system. And then this. Look, looks like everybody else's bus when they first get it. I haven't really done anything in here, so this is just a standard. But bus. it's all right there, easy for you to get to if you yeah. need to do anything. So simple. You yeah. could go off of your coach batteries and wire up switches for lights that are already there, or just whatever you want. Right. It's nice knowing those wires are in place. For sure. Yeah, and the one thing, the one nice thing, you know, I mentioned um, about uh, the solar scenario is that when the guys set it up the way they did. I mean, everything is, you know, works back and forth. So like the bus can charge, you know, the bus alternator can charge my solar batteries. Those batteries can jump the bus if necessary. So it's, it's a really great system there. And then um, I, you know, just forgot to show you this real quick here, but <clears throat> here's our gray tank. So we don't have a black tank. This is just a, just a gray tank. So it's just a composting toilet. And then the shower and sink and toilet uh, will run into here. So, and then the, the uh, drain and that's a 100 gallon uh gray tank so that was the single hardest like difficult challenge besides painting which took the longest right uh, that was such a hard project to get that mounted up in there and whatnot but do you have any videos that you took of while you were doing this yeah, yeah. are they did you have a channel you put them on yeah our channel which they're not up there on the channel yet but they will be it's rogue trips like r-o-g-u-e rogue trips and uh that's youtube that's on YouTube. So yeah. you've got the part of the build and then you also film adventures that you guys go on as yeah. a family? Yeah, we do. We have a, one where we went to the Virgin Islands recently in the Grand Canyon and we'll, we'll film some stuff from here and put it on there as well. So, um, but yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to, to, to do two things, kind of like give, give some advice and that kind of thing and it, you know, share our experience, but then also kind of create like a, a, a photo book, a video book just for us, just a video album, just to have 
for memories. But yeah, but some of that stuff will be on there, including doing this gray tank and that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, right on, man. I'm glad yeah. that we end up bumping into each other. This I has know, been likewise. a real treat. Yeah. So we, we start here with the tour and then we can just keep it going, following along on your YouTube channel. Hey, perfect. Sounds right on. Good. Thanks for taking time. All right. See ya.